So if you sit there and you eat food and you say it doesn't matter, organic is a bougie thing, organic is a privileged thing, I want you to think about the migrant worker that is picking your food, that is touching those herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, and get ingesting all of that before it gets washed and sterilized and sent to you. Cheap, convenient food is abusive food. Cheap, convenient food is abusive food. Not just to you and your family and your gut, but to everybody that's in that supply chain except for whoever the top of the pyramid is. The question is, do we need the labor? And the answer is yes. So once we can get over that, then we can come up with a solution. But we have to protect the people that grow our food, that prepare our food, that harvest our food, that clean our food, that slaughter our food. We have to protect those people. Don't have anybody in my community that's like, you know what I really want to go do? Work at a slaughterhouse. You know what I really want to go do? Pick strawberries in the hot ass sun all day. And we can talk all day about white privilege, but there's also American privilege. And Americans do not want to slave away in the hot sun all day long. So as long as we're pretending that we don't need the labor, we're going to be losing. And we need to start from a place of honesty. Americans don't want to do these jobs. And we have to invite the people that do want to do these jobs and treat them with dignity and love because they are the lifeline of the food that we are eating. Regenerative or not regenerative, the people growing our food need to be treated well. And if it's not regenerative, we have to realize who is getting poisoned directly. Who is spraying this poison? Who is breathing this poison? Who is touching this poison? And so I want to tell every mother out there, every white mother, black mother, Latino mother, that puts so much love into her table from the grocery store till she cleans the dishes afterwards, please put that much love into the time from the seed until the grocery store. We need the same amount of love. I know you love your family and I know how much love you put into your food and the food on your table, but that love needs to be extended from the seed to the grocery store. We need to take care of the people that are feeding us. Humanity's desire for convenience is pushing the food system to where it is. And we have to give up our desire for everything to be cheaper, faster, and easier. We have to be willing to cut the butternut squash ourselves, and not just get it wrapped in plastic in saran wrap with an organic sticker on it and feel like we did our part. And so it is a massive amount of work to grow food. But I think that if we all grew a little bit of food and we had that relationship to it, we would honor it more. What I would ask is that people buy local from your farmer's market, from a CSA, a real CSA, not a place that collates produce into a box for you um, and, and sends it to you. And I request that we try to figure out a way to get more custodians of the land. The system is not set up to let people farm. but. Right now, there is a massive push to centralize the food system in the same way that the banking system is centralized. And when that happens, we have lost all control and there is no sovereignty. And so we all need to remember how to grow food, how to can food, how to preserve food, how to store food. And if we don't remember that, we're lost. The people that just want to drive their hybrid, drink their oat milk latte, and get their organic butternut squash at Whole Foods, you got to donate some money to somebody that wants to grow food from sunup to sundown. And you who want to grow food to sunup to sundown, you need to ask every single person that you have ever met that might even have enough money to do it, can you help me get some land? Show me the way. Because 40% is what you need to put down on an ag loan. And that is crazy. You could, I can buy a mansion basically for three percent down if I'm a first-time home buyer. I can buy a mansion for 10 percent down if it's my second home, but I cannot buy some farmland unless I have 40 percent down, and that's only maybe if the assets and the person who was farming before me was making enough money to make that make sense. I denied for seven loans before I got approved for one for this property behind me. Like, consider that. I made a million dollars last year, and I can't buy a two million dollar piece of property. If I can't afford land unless I inherit it from my parents, then there's no winning. 
and we want people to win. And the only way for people to win is if their food is healthy. And the only way for their food to be healthy is if the soil is healthy. So the only solution is to marry the money with the farmers. And that's what we have to do. And the idea that we can take nature out of farming and we can do it with robots and chemicals and pesticides is crazy pants because we can't take nature out of anything. But what if it's that we live by the grace of the microbiome that let us evolve into what we are and that microbiome could take us down just as easily as it let us evolve. I'm willing to throw my hat over the fence and say, I'm gonna learn to fly on the way down. And we don't raise our women to be like that. We raise women to think that they need to be perfect. And what I have to say to you is you don't need to be perfect. Farming is failing and it's public failing. People drive by like, what is she doing growing hops in Southern California? It's publicly people, when I make mistakes, it's all out here in the field with the road to drive by and that's okay. Yep, I tried that and it didn't work experiments on the farm and so be willing be willing to look not great and be willing to fail and be willing to ask for help it does not make us weaker to ask for help and that's exciting that's you know when we put down the distractions and we start tending to life and people have that experience of being alive again. That is my intention for the film. I'm inviting you to participate in the Kiss the Ground Global Synchronized Watch Party, September 22nd. We're gonna get a million people plus strong to watch the film on Netflix and then come back to a live teleconference with some of the farmers, the scientists, the celebrities talking about why this film is so essential for this time, for this moment. And we can all tune in, watch, and interact with this amazing teleconference uh, on the evening of the 22nd of September as the after party of the Global Watch Party on Netflix.